In this lesson, we're going to be looking at solving systems of equations by graphing by hand. In these four examples, what we're going to do is exactly that. You'll see that these are systems of equations because there are two of them. Uh, in this particular case, we're asked to solve each system of equations by graphing. And we'll notice that this first one is a quadratic because of the squared. And the second one is a linear function because it doesn't have a squared on it. It's a linear function. Uh, in order to graph a quadratic, there's two methods. Uh, one of them is completing the square, which is what I'll focus on. But the other method is, again, once if it's in standard form, you can find the vertex by doing x is equal to negative b over 2a, which is equal to negative negative 6 over 2 times 1, which is 6 over 2 which is 3. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is 3, and the y-coordinate, if we substitute 3 into the function for x, we would have 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 7 would give us a y-coordinate of 9 minus 18 plus 7, which would be negative 2. So the vertex will be at 3 and negative 2. Uh, I'll focus on completing the square, so this is just another method. We'll find the vertex is the same thing. In this particular case, Completing the square is putting it into vertex form. So I'm going to add and subtract half of 6 squared. So 3 squared is 9 inside the brackets. Uh, remove the negative 9 from the brackets. And we'll be left with y is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 9 uh, minus 9 plus 7. So our completed square form is y is equal to x minus 3 squared minus 2. And you'll see from this vertex form, the vertex is also at 3, negative 2, uh, because your multiplier is 1, either in vertex form or in standard form. It opens up in typical fashion. So over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4 from the vertex, over 3, up 9 from the vertex. And that's what it would look like. Uh, so that is that function. Okay, and this next one, we have to graph the linear function y is equal to 2x minus 5. Uh, this is already in slope-intercept form. If you remember, slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, where b is the y-intercept and m is the slope. So in this particular case, the y-intercept is negative 5. The slope of 2 would be up 2 and over 1. So that's what our line would look like. If we continue that pattern, what we're going to see is that this becomes our graph. Okay. Uh, finally, what solve means is to find the solution of where these intersect, the point that belongs on both graphs. So our solutions, there's two of them. Uh, one solution would be this point here, which is 6, 7. That's one of our solutions. Our other solution would be that point there, which would be 2, negative 1. All right, there's an example. Let's do another one. Now, in this next case, both of these quadratic functions, this is a quadratic quadratic system, are already in vertex form. So I'm going to jump straight to graphing it. The vertex of this first quadratic function is at five, 0, 5. And the negative 2 means that it opens down. And all the perfect squares, instead of 1, 4, 9, etc., are being doubled. So over 1, down 2, over 2, down instead of 4, down 8, because it's being stretched out twice as far. Uh, in this particular case, that's what that graph looks like. And in the other case, the vertex is at negative 3, negative 1, which would be right here. And it also has a multiplier of negative 2, which means that it also opens down uh, and is being stretched by a factor of 2. Uh, what you'll notice is that these two functions will be parallel if I continue them uh, continuously. So they only are actually going to meet at one point. This is the only point that they're going to meet at, because other beyond that, they are parallel, so they won't intersect any more than that. So the solution here would be negative 2 and negative 3. Okay. Uh, let's do two more and then take some key ideas. In this next example, uh, you'll notice that these here are both equal to 0. So what we want to do in order to graph those would be to isolate y and then maybe complete the square or put it into slope-intercept form. So if I isolate y in this first function, I would add y to both sides, and I would have y is equal to x squared minus 10x plus 25. I'm going to complete the square in this case. You could use negative b over 2a from standard form to find your vertex. Uh, that's just not the way I'm going to practice. This is x squared minus 10x. I would add and subtract 25. And then plus 25. You'll see that this step is actually not necessary because we're going to get to a result of 0 outside the bracket. So it's x squared minus 10x plus 25 minus 25 plus 25. That makes 0. So this is y is equal to x minus 5 squared plus 0. So the vertex for this particular function is at 5, 0, which is right here. It opens up in typical fashion. 
which would be like this, and that is our quadratic function. Now our linear function we want to put into slope-intercept form. If I isolate y, I would be subtracting x and adding 4. You might want to look at the top of this problem if you're having problems seeing it. Uh, and we'll have y is equal to negative x plus 4. That's in slope-intercept form. There's the point right there. And in this particular case, the slope is negative 1. So down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. In this particular case, what you will see is these two functions, if extended, will never intersect. So in this particular case, there are no solutions, which is absolutely fine. Uh, in this last example, what you'll notice is uh, probably one of the initial things you'll notice is that it's not in the variables x or y. So it's important to indicate which variable is related to which. So because of the d squared, the d has to be related to x. So in this particular case, if I'm to label the axes, d is my x-axis and h is my y-axis. So I'm going to have to isolate h in each case. Uh, in the first case, what I'm going to have to do to isolate h, maybe I will add 2h. So I'll be left with 2h is equal to d squared plus 4d minus 2. Divide both sides by 2, and we're left with h is equal to 0.5d squared plus 2d minus 1. And in this particular case, I'm going to complete the square again, but again, you could use the negative b over 2a thing to find the x-coordinate of the vertex, or in this case, the d-coordinate of the vertex. Uh, this would be 0.5 outside of d squared plus 4d minus 1. Now I need to add and subtract 4 inside the brackets. So this is d squared plus 4d plus 4 minus 4 minus 1. And take the negative 4 out. When he gets multiplied by 0.5, he becomes negative 2. So that would be negative, or sorry, 0 0.5 plus 4d plus 4. And outside of the brackets, I have a minus 2 and a minus 1. So my completed square is 0 0.5 d plus 2 squared minus 3. Again, if this is too complicating for you, you may want to do what I did in example 1, the negative b over 2a x coordinate of the vertex. My vertex is at negative 2, negative 3. And it opens up, but is being compressed by a half. So all of my perfect squares are being cut in half. So in this particular case, it looks like this. Uh, finally, to graph my other line, which is, this is a line, 0 equals h plus 1. If I subtract 1, I have h is equal to negative 1. This is a straight horizontal line where h is equal to negative 1. So that is this line right here. So in this case, you'll see that there's two solutions. One of our solutions is negative 4, negative 1. That's a solution. And our other solution is right here, which is 0, negative 1. Okay? Uh, finally, just the key ideas for this particular section. Here's how we solve by graphing. First of all, we graph any linear functions in slope-intercept form. Okay, it must be done that way. Uh, which is y equals mx plus b. There are other methods, but that's by far uh, probably the easiest. This may require algebra. Secondly, what we're going to do is graph any quadratic functions. There's two ways you could do this. My focus in this lesson was graphing them in vertex form, which is y is equal to a times x minus p squared plus q. Uh, or you could use x is equal to negative b over 2a, and that has to be from standard form only, and then substitute to find out your y-coordinate of the vertex. Uh, this may require algebra, which is completing the square for vertex form. Finally, the solution is, or the solutions are, the ordered pairs where the functions intersect. Okay. Uh, there's one major disadvantage of solving by graphing by hand, and that's why we're going to get into solving algebraically. And it's a major disadvantage, and it's this. It's that it's impossible to get exact value solutions. It is only easy to see integer solutions. So if there's non-integer solutions, it's, you can only estimate but not get exact values.